In this video, I want to walk you through a CFA level one exam style question on the time value of money. This is yet another in the sequence of TVM questions and problems. This time we're going to be dealing with unequal cash flows. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, do keep watching. Let's get solving. An investment is projected to generate the following cash flow stream. Each cash flow is assumed to occur at the end of the relevant year. So you've got the cash flows, including one negative cash flow there, and is subsequently expected to be sold for 190,000 at the end of the fourth year. So that's our final cash flow there. If the relevant discount rate is 6%, the investment's present value is closest to. So this is another PV problem, but this time uh, we can't use uh, the classic time value of money worksheet with the PMTs, for example, because that only works when you've got equal level cash flows, which would form an annuity. So can't use the TVM worksheet. What can we do instead? Well, we can compute the PV using our calculator um, and doing it relatively quickly by just inputting a value. So let me show you what I would do in the exam, and then I'll show you an alternative way uh, using the cash flow worksheet or the cash flow menu, but that's an alternative approach. So what I could do is say PV equals, and now I'm going to take each one of these cash flows. So the first one is 10,000 because it's one year away from today. I'll div divide it by 1.0. Now the interest rate here is 6%. So 1.06, um, don't necessarily need the bracket to be honest using it to make things uh, a little bit neater. Now, the second one is a negative cash flow. So 8,000, but divided by 1.06 to the power of two, seeing as it is two years away from today. Now, the third one is positive. So 12,000 divided by 1.06 to the power of three. And obviously the fourth one would be 190,000 which I'm going to divide by a factor of 1.06 to the power of four. And if I press equals, this should give me the right result. So let's see what this um, will yield on the calculator. Okay, let's do it. If you've got your calculator set up to algebraic operating system instead of the chain method, um, that's going to basically be quite easy. If you haven't, you need to first format your calculator in accordance with the hints or instructions provided in the relevant video. I've included a link to this in the description of this recording. So let's go. 10,000 divided by 1.06. Okay, I've got a plus and a minus here, so I'm just going to do minus 8,000 divided by 1.06. Press the X squared key to raise this to the power of two, plus 12,000 divided by 1.06. Now, y to the power of x key and the power three, plus 190,000, okay, divided by 1.06, y to the power of x key and the power is four, equals. And I've got an answer of 162887. I didn't need to use any sophisticated functions. I just made sure that I input everything um, precisely. And I didn't have to worry about the order in which I input because my calculator is set up to do power ahead of division or multiplication, for example, and to do this ahead of additional deduction. So um, if your calculator is in AOS mode, that helps greatly to get answers and results like this. Now, this I can see corresponds very nicely to, you know, if we look at the uh, answers to answer B. So we know that the answer to the question is B already, but I now want to show you an alternative way of um, doing the same computation. This works, but it's uh, potentially um, easy to get this wrong if you, you know, if you don't get your inputs right, which is absolutely possible under exam conditions. So let's explore getting to the same answer, but using an important function of your calculator. That's the CF worksheet. And you 
go to this worksheet by pressing the CF key, which is sitting right next door to the second key. So pre let's press CF. And as you can see, I've got something there already, I guess, from the previous question that I was doing. And the first thing you want to be able to do is potentially just clear this worksheet. So in order to clear it of any data which may be sitting there, press second, followed by the CE, C key, which is at the very bottom of your calculator keys on the left hand side. And it's got clear work as its secondary function. And this key will work to clear whatever worksheet you're currently in, but you've got to be in the worksheet, which is why I pressed CF first, for it to work and to clear stuff, data, which is stored under the relevant headings there. As you can see, CF0 all of a sudden became equal to zero, so it was effectively cleared. It's only the TVM worksheet which has its own dedicated clearing function, uh, which is the secondary function of the FV key, which says clear TVM. The other worksheets on your calculator need to be cleared when you are specifically in them, like here in the CF. Okay. Now you need to provide the calculator with the inputs. We're not looking, sorry, we're, we, we can't provide the calculator with an input for F, CF0, which is the cash flow at time uh, zero, which is essentially going to be our time value of um, uh, our present value, sorry, the, of, the, of the whole project. There's nothing happening at time zero. Use the down arrow pressed once to get to something which reads C01. So that's the cash flow at time one. And now make this equal to 10,000 because that's our time one cash inflow. So I'm doing simply 10,000, but very critically followed by the enter key. So you need to press enter for the equal sign to appear over here, which means your calculator has accepted the info input. If you don't press enter, it will be ignored. It will not be stored. Now press the second, uh, sorry, the down arrow again, and you can see F01. This stands for the frequency of this cash flow. So if it happens, you know, for more than one year in a row, you could potentially say, well, two years, three years, or something like this. By default, it's set at one, and that's what we're going to use. We're not going to change this. And I'm going to press the down arrow again. And as you can see, we are displayed. Uh, we, we see a dis uh, C02 displayed over here. And we'll want to make this equal to 8,000, but negative. So 8,000, follow this up with the plus minus key to turn this into a negative figure. But once again, finishing with enter, which puts an equal sign here. Good. Do the same thing as before. So down arrow twice, omitting the frequency, just leaving it basically at one. And this is going to be C03. Um, we need to make this 12,000 and uh, follow this up by enter with enter and I kind of jumped the gun here because I, I wrote equals. Well, first of all, you need to input the value, press enter, and this makes the equals uh, sign appear, which is just confirmation of the fact that you, uh, your calculator has stored the relevant input. Press the down arrows twice, down arrow twice again. We, we are uh, at C04. And we want to make this the big one, 190,000 over here. Obviously, follow this up with enter, which will once again have the effect of presenting us with the equals key, enter. OK, good. The nice thing about the cash flow worksheet is you can review your inputs. Um, so what you can go do, sorry, do is go up and down with the uh, arrows. I'm going to go up just to see whether my you know, remake of previous inputs were entered correctly. This was 12,000, this was minus eight. Okay, we wanted the minus here, that's fine. And this was 10,000, so everything seems to be right. I'm happy with it. The cash flow worksheet is simply a place to store the data, but it doesn't actually perform any computations yet. In order to compute, present value, we need to go to the menu which is next door. 
and that's NPV. So once you've got these inputs, go and press NPV. And over here, it's going to ask you for I, which, as you can probably guess, is the rate of interest. We want to make this equal to 6. So press 6, follow this up with Enter, and you guessed it. It will have the effect of making I equal to 6. Now go down with the down arrow and it says NPV and at the top of the display it's actually saying I'm ready to compute. So it's kind of prompting you simply to press the CPT queue, uh, key. So press CPT, compute, and it says okay NPV equals to 162,887, which is the same result as we had over here when we used the calculator without any of its functions, just typing the data and uh, hoping that we don't make any mistake. So this is a more certain, sure way um, of doing the same computation. However, it takes a much longer time to do. Nevertheless, I guess there will be problems perhaps within the uh, corporate issuer section of the exam when you need to use this worksheet. So it's a good, as good a time as any to start using it and getting familiar with it.